Good afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining us for um, an op our open enrollment webinar. Today we're going to talk about managing a serious illness and advanced care directive. My name is Jessica Shi. I'm the communications director here at SFHSS and I'm just going to share an event overview today. So everyone will be on mute for the entire presentation. However, we love it when you ask questions, so please look for the menu bar. It's either going to be at the top or bottom of your screen, depending on whether you're joining from a computer or a mobile device. Look for the little question mark box, select that box, and you will open up a live Q&A chat, and that's how you can send us questions. If your question is a little more complex or personal in nature, we highly recommend a one-on-one -on -one consultation, which all of our health plan vendors have agreed to, and you can find that on our OE webpage at sfhss.org forward slash OE2022. During, once the presentations are over, we will have a live Q&A session where we're gonna answer as many of your questions as we can in the time that we have. So without further ado, please take it away. One of the 25 SFHSS benefits analysts who answer your calls when you have a benefits question. We're so glad you've joined us for the Managing Serious Illness slash Advanced Care Directive webinar today because there is never a good time to get a tough diagnosis and life doesn't stop to let you think clearly. Today's webinar will inform you about the different programs our health plans have to help you manage your serious illness or create an advanced care directive. Being informed will allow you to plan ahead and make decisions with a clear mind and gather your important documents to ensure your request will be honored and respected. If you have any questions, we're always here to help. Just call member services. Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Jeff Burnich. I'm the Chief Physician Enterprise Executive for Canopy Health. And I'm here today to talk to you about managing a serious illness on behalf of Canopy Care HMO, HealthNet, and Canopy Health. So here's the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to talk about managing serious illness, palliative care and advanced care directives, John Muir health programs, UCSF health programs, and Hill Physician programs. In January 2021, HealthNet launched Canopy Care HMO a product that exclusively utilizes the Canopy Health Network to give Bay Area residents more choices and greater value for their health care. This new health plan features a broad network of doctors and hospitals, and it's ideal if you live and work in the nine county region. With Canopy Care HMO, providers have the freedom to help their patients find the right care across the Canopy Health Network. This ensures members are provided with the right care through every stage of life. Community physicians and high quality medical centers are the foundation of the Canopy Health Network. They're the providers that have been serving our communities for decades. Managing a serious illness. There's a chance that you or a family member will need to manage a serious illness, a health condition that lasts several years and leads to the end of life. Examples are certain cancers, heart failure, lung disease, and even dementia. With the Canopy Health Network, members can access the latest treatments for these situations managed by top-notch healthcare. Should you need to manage a serious illness, you may need palliative care or hospice care. If you are considering palliative or hospice care, you can ask your doctor for a referral. Palliative care. Palliative care provides patients relief from pain and other symptoms caused by their serious illness along with treatments for their illness. A palliative care team consisting of doctors, nurses, and other specially trained individuals works to improve the quality of life for their patients. Palliative care can be provided in hospitals, nursing homes, outpatient palliative care clinics, or at home. Hospice care. Hospice care is for those patients who are nearing the end of life. Hospice care focuses on the comfort and quality of life of a person with serious illness approaching the end of life. Hospice care is provided at home or in a nursing home, hospital, or hospice center. A hospice team includes nurses, doctors, social workers, spiritual advisors, 
and trained individuals who work together with the patient and family to provide emotional, medical, and spiritual support. Advanced Care Directive. An Advanced Care Directive is a legal document that allows a person to make their future health care preferences known if they were to lose their capacity to make decisions. It will only operate when a person is no longer able to make decisions for themselves, such as after a severe injury or from a serious illness which could happen at any age. Advanced Care Directive Support. Seeking support from your medical provider can help make these decisions easier. Your healthcare provider can help you understand all your treatment options and consider the treatment you do or do not want to receive. Canopy Health Network and Palliative and Hospice Care. Canopy Health Network offers palliative and hospice care through our alliance partners, including John Muir Health, and UCSF Health. These organizations were created by doctors and hospitals, and so they support the doctor-patient relationship. We partner with these premier organizations in order to allow us to expand our capabilities, increase access to services, and better serve our members. A leader in healthcare in the Bay Area, John Muir Health is a not-for-profit integrated system of doctors, hospitals, and other services. UCSF Health is internationally renowned for providing high specialized and innovative care and is part of the UC San Francisco, one of the top universities in the nation for health sciences, research, and higher education. John Muir Health Palliative Care. John Muir Health has a supportive and palliative care services team that offers specialized medical services for people living with serious illness. The team works with patients and those important to them in identifying treatment choices and goals for medical care based on their wishes and values. The shared goal is to improve quality of life for patients and their families. The supportive and palliative care services team includes board certified supportive and palliative care physicians and specially trained nurses, social workers, and chaplains. The teams work with a patient's other doctors to provide an extra layer of support. Supportive and palliative care is appropriate at any stage in a serious illness, and it can be provided along with treatments meant to cure. The supportive and palliative care services team assists patients in two of the largest medical centers in Contra Costa County, Walnut Creek Medical Center and Concord Medical Center, and at the Walnut Creek Clinic. John Muir Health, Home Health, Skilled Needs Services. John Muir Health offers home health services that assist homebound patients of all ages who live in Contra Costa and parts of Alameda and Solano counties. Patients include those with certain cardiac, respiratory, wound ostomy, diabetes, neurologic, pediatric, and medical surgical care needs. If you are homebound and have a skilled need, your doctor can order the following services for you. Skilled nursing, physical, occupational, and speech therapy, medical social work, nutrition counseling, and certified home health aid services. Should you need it, John Muir Health works closely with you, your family, and your doctor to provide the best care. UCSF Health Palliative Care. The palliative care program at UCSF Health provides specialized medical care for patients who are seriously ill. They offer expert symptom management, ensuring patients' wishes for their medical care are both known and honored and help patients and their caregivers cope with serious illness. Teams in the program take a comprehensive, whole person approach to their patient's care. UCSF Outpatient Palliative Care Service. UCSF Health's Outpatient Palliative Care Service serves patients with serious illnesses other than cancer, such as heart failure, chronic lung disease, kidney disease, liver disease, and neurological disease. The team includes a physician, nurse, social worker, and chaplain, and partner closely with your medical providers to help you feel more comfortable and supported. UCSF Health Symptom Management Service also called SMS. SMS provides treatment and counseling for physical and emotional symptoms of cancer and cancer treatment. Assistance includes help with pain, fatigue, depression, anxiety, advanced care planning, and spiritual issues. Treatments integrate medical, psychological, social work, and spiritual approaches with regular cancer care. SMS coordinates this care with scheduled cancer treatments and with the support of patients' doctors. Pediatric palliative care. 
Pediatric palliative care is offered through the Integrated Pain and Palliative Care Program at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, UCSF Health Hospice Program. UCSF Health and By the Bay Health work together to provide high quality hospice, palliative, and skilled home health care services to patients and families throughout the Bay Area, including the most vulnerable patient populations. The partnership forms a leading hospice, palliative, and skilled home health care delivery program delivered in patients' homes. By the Bay Health facilities are located in San Francisco, Sonoma, and Larkspur, UCSF Health Care at Home Program. The Care at Home Program provides home-based primary care services and long-term palliative care to homebound adults living in San Francisco. Patients must be 65 or older and be unable to leave home due to a physical disability or dementia. A team of doctors, nurse practitioners, and social workers with expertise in geriatrics and palliative medicine make home visits, support patients and families with complex care needs, focuses on understanding their goals and preferences for medical care, specializes in symptom management, and provides individualized care. Additional team members include registered nurses and patient care coordinators. The team is especially trained to manage common illnesses and conditions in aging, such as dementia, Alzheimer's, vascular, and others, arthritis, and heart problems, as well as frailty and falls. Hill Physicians Care Management Programs. Hill Physicians offer some of the best programs, services, and resources in healthcare, including their care management program. Their care management, transition care, and serious illness management programs help you deal with multiple conditions, new diagnoses, serious illness, and hospitalizations. These programs offer a care team that can include a registered nurse, pharmacist, health educator, social worker, and or other support staff. If you are in one of these programs, your care team will work alongside your doctors, complementing the care they provide and offering additional support as needed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Adam Gunther, and I am a senior account service representative here at Blue Shield of California. In this presentation, I will be going over the programs available to you for managing a serious illness and advanced care directive. Palliative care is patient and family-centered care that focuses on quality of life. It eases the discomfort of serious illness by addressing the member's physical, emotional, social, and spiritual issues. Palliative care is appropriate at any stage of a serious illness and can be combined with ongoing curative treatments. What's available to SFHSS members? Treatment decision and support. Care plan development and shared decision making. Home-based palliative care visits in person and via video conferencing. Medical management and reconciliation. Psychosocial support for mental, emotional, social, and spiritual well-being. 24-7 access to health and support and caregiver support. Where is the support available for SFHSS members? throughout California, wherever the person needs or wants them, in the home, in clinics in many metropolitan areas, in many large hospitals, via phone or video in rural areas, and in many nursing homes. Who is available to support SFHSS members? Doctors, nurses, social workers, chaplains, home health aides, and other specialists. For more information, please visit www.blueshieldca.com forward slash palliative care or call 800-393-6130. Hospice care is medical care for those who are experiencing life-limiting illnesses and are in the final stage of life with six months or less left of life. Care is typically centered in the home but can also be in a hospital or extended care facility. Hospice is provided when there is no active curative treatment being given for the serious illness. Instead, Care involves support and managing symptoms. Comfort is the primary goal. What's available to SFHSS members as far as hospice care? Services, end of life for those who are seriously ill. A care team, physician, nurse, social worker, home health aide, and chaplain. Location, in-home, hospital, skilled nursing, or extended care facility. Support hours, regular visits, and 24-7 telephonic support. 
cost sharing. There is no copayment or coinsurance and no prior authorization is required. Care goals, improve quality of life and support the natural process of dying. For more information, members can call the 800 number on the back of their ID card. No one wants to think about the end of their life, but there are ways to be prepared. Writing down your wishes on an advanced directive when you're healthy is just as important as when you're sick. You never know when it may be needed. You may already have an idea of the treatment you'd want toward the end of your life. For instance, if you have a condition you are unlikely to recover from, or if you're in a coma with little to no chance of ever waking up. Without an advanced directive, your medical team would typically consult with your nearest family member on treatment options if you were unable to communicate. Individual members of your family may disagree on what's best, or you may want another loved one who knows your wishes better to advocate for you. Without an advanced directive, others may decide things on your behalf that you would not have chosen. Members can talk to their primary care physician or call member services for assistance in completing the advanced directive. Members can also go online and complete an advanced directive themselves. Here are a couple websites you can visit to start this advanced directive process or get additional information regarding advanced directives. The Conversation Project. The Conversation Project is dedicated to helping people talk about their wishes for end of life. Prepare. Prepare is an interactive website that can help you identify your values and goals for medical care in the future. Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC offers a variety of resources about advanced care planning and related issues. Coalition for Compassionate Care of California. The CCCC provides online resources that can help you start the planning process and begin the conversation with others. Thank you for your time and feel free to visit www.blueshieldca.com forward slash SFHSS for more information on the offered SFHSS benefit plans and programs available to SFHSS members with Blue Shield of California. Hello and welcome. In this presentation, you'll learn about Kaiser Permanente's programs and resources to help manage a serious illness. You'll also learn about the importance of life care planning and the types of services we offer to make end life care as comfortable as possible for our members. Would you like to learn more? Great, then let's begin. Managing a serious illness or living with a chronic condition can be difficult. We're committed to helping our members live a happier and healthier life by using best practices to support the prevention and self-management of chronic conditions. Our members receive individualized care plans tailored to their personal needs and goals. Care plans usually include information about how to take medicines, manage symptoms, make necessary appointments, and do things at home to better manage a chronic condition. If you don't have a care plan and have trouble managing your condition, speak with your doctor. Together, you can create a plan to help you improve your health. Let's look at how to get started. First, you'll need a referral from your physician or nurse practitioner to join one of our programs. We'll contact you directly to set up your initial appointment with your personal chronic care manager. If an interpreter is needed, please let us know. Following your first appointment, you'll receive the location of your chronic care manager and their direct phone number. You'll also continue to see your physician or nurse practitioner for medical care. Now let's highlight palliative and hospice care, which are important aspects of your health care when you're dealing with a serious illness. It's hard to have good days when being sick makes you feel sad, lonely, uncomfortable, or scared. Your quality of life can suffer, and not just in your body, but also in your mind and spirit. Palliative care is the field of medicine that helps give you more good days by providing care for those quality of life issues. It's specialized medical care that focuses on providing patients relief from pain and other symptoms of a serious illness no matter the diagnosis or stage of disease. It can help you and your loved ones to understand your illness better, decide what treatment you want or don't want, and communicate with your doctors and nurses. Hospice care, on the other hand, is a type of palliative care, 
but it's for people who are near the end of life. Next, we'll take a deeper dive into how these two services differ. Here are the key differences between palliative care and hospice care. This table can help address some of the concerns that you may have, such as what kinds of care are involved? When does the care happen? Where does the care happen? And who provides the care? These are all great questions. And if you need additional support, please don't hesitate to call us or connect with your doctor. If you'd like, you can pause on this slide and continue when you're ready. Now let's look at life care planning and why it's important. Life care planning is Kaiser Permanente's name for a process also known as advanced care planning. We believe that all adults should plan in advance. Although it isn't always easy, it's important to have conversations about what you value most in life and how you would want to be treated in specific health or medical situations. In life care planning, you'll choose someone to represent your health care wishes if there's a time in the future when you can't speak. And you'll also decide what you'd want that person to say. One way you can document your wishes is by completing an advanced healthcare directive. Let's watch a short video of one of our doctors explain further. As a doctor, I believe it's important for my patients and their families to have a say in their medical care. I encourage them to plan for an unexpected medical event that might leave them unable to speak for themselves. I want to share with you a story about my patient Pablo, a man in his 40s. He was married with two young children. He suddenly had a stroke and went into a coma. His wife Lucia was told that he most likely would never recover. The doctors asked Lucia whether Pablo would want to be kept on life support. But she and Pablo had never talked about what he would want. The stress on the family was devastating. What a gift it would have been if they had all talked in advance and made a plan for a situation like this. Life care planning is a service we offer that helps you plan for future health care in the event of an unexpected serious injury or illness or at the end of life. Because what happened to Pablo can happen to anyone. Two of the most important decisions you can make are who would speak for you if you were unable to communicate and what would you want this person to say? We call this person your healthcare agent. Life care planning begins with a conversation when you're well and it continues throughout your life. Life care planning helps make sure your wishes are honored. It gives your family comfort and security knowing you will get the health care you would have wanted. At Kaiser Permanente, we have written plans like the Advanced Health Care Directive, in-person classes, and online resources. Talk with your doctor or visit the Health Education Department at your local medical center. Now is the right time to begin your life care plan. We can help. At Kaiser Permanente, we assist members with their advanced healthcare directive by offering classes at no cost. This class covers how to complete the document and what to consider in making health decisions and delegating someone to speak on your behalf. To help you prepare for the class, please visit kp.org forward slash life care plan. To protect the health and safety of our members, we're currently only offering online classes. Now let's look at hospice care. The last stages of a serious illness can be so hard. You may feel like you have lost control of your life or what will happen to you. Hospice care can help you get back some of that control by showing you what your options are and helping you make decisions about things that are important to you. You may want to consider hospice care if you have a disease or illness that is expected to shorten your life, 
treatment that tries to cure the disease or prolong your life has become more of a burden than a benefit to you, or you would like to spend your remaining life as comfortably as possible in a setting that you choose, such as your own home. Here are some of the documents you'll need to complete if you decide that you want hospice care. Next, we'll be highlighting when a second opinion is helpful and how to get one. When you're facing a tough healthcare decision, you may have a hard time knowing what to do. A second opinion may be a good idea if you are not clear about how well a test or treatment may work, you need additional information about your options, or you're just unsure about a diagnosis. If you'd like a second opinion, you can choose from one of the following options. You can ask your plan physician to help you arrange for one. You can also choose another plan physician and contact the appointment center to schedule a visit. And lastly, you can find a physician outside of the network. However, this will only be covered by your health plan if it is pre-authorized by Kaiser Permanente Medical Group. Here are some additional resources and information that can help you with life care planning, evaluating hospice programs, and arranging for second opinions. Thank you for your time and attention. Today, we highlighted some of our chronic conditions management programs. We also went over a few key differences between palliative care and hospice care. We heard from a Kaiser Permanente doctor on the importance of life care planning and the Advanced Healthcare Directive class we offer to members at no cost. If you wish to learn more, please visit kp.org or call us at Member Services. We are here for you. May you live well, be well, and thrive. Thank you for joining us today to hear more about the United Healthcare additional plan benefits and features available to San Francisco Health Service System plan members. United Healthcare is here for you wherever you are in your healthcare journey, whether you are healthy and want to stay healthy, or if you have a more complex medical condition and need assistance with that. In a prior San Francisco Health Service System presentation, I spoke to all the specific plan details and benefits. United Healthcare has many additional benefits and programs available to you. Today, I'm going to speak specifically about the programs available to those with more complex medical conditions and advanced illness. If you have questions about something that I do not touch on, do not hesitate to call customer service. At the end of the presentation, I will provide you with their phone number. As a United Healthcare San Francisco Health Service System plan member, you have many additional plan benefits and features available to you. Some of them include coverage for hospice, care links, and end of life assistance. United Healthcare is here for you regardless of where you are on your healthcare journey. End of life planning may include preparing an advanced directive. An advanced directive is for anyone regardless of life stage. It's a document that allows you to tell others how you want to live and be treated when you are unable to speak for yourself. Your state may have specific approved documents like California does, and you can find those on this website, www.caringinfo.org forward slash planning forward slash advance dash directives. That way, once you go to that site, you can find the right document for your state where you reside. Other programs available to you while covered under the United Healthcare San Francisco Health Service System plans include our National Provider Care Links, which is in home care and additional savings. Through Care Links, you can receive assistance with grocery shopping, meal preparation, light housekeeping, personal care, medication reminders, and more, depending on what your needs are. You will have access to a one-time offer of four hours of free services, and then after that, 
you can purchase additional hours of care at a discount. As a United Healthcare member, you also have access to freshly made meals from Mom's Meals delivered right to your home. If you've been recently discharged from an inpatient stay at a hospital or skilled nursing facility, you can receive up to 84 meals immediately following discharge when referred by a United Healthcare advocate. If you've not been recently um, released from an inpatient hospital stay, you can access discounted meals. The discounted meals are available to you and you can either call Mom's Meals or go to their website. I will direct you to our customer service to get those details. An additional negotiated benefit specifically for San Francisco Health Service system plan members is additional drug coverage to support end of life decisions. Additionally, some of you may be wondering what hospice care is and what the difference between hospice and palliative care is. Hospice care is a benefit that provides care and support for people who are terminally ill, usually with a life expectancy of six months or less. The focus of hospice care is to help a patient live comfortable during this time. Hospice care is covered under both of the United Healthcare San Francisco Health Service System plans. If you are covered by Medicare Parts A and B, hospice coverage um, is available only through the Medicare certified hospice providers and will be billed directly to Medicare. If you're covered under the Part B only plan, United Healthcare will cover this benefit as if you had Part A. And for the difference between hospice and palliative care, uh, they are both types of care which are similar but yet different. Individuals who are receiving hospice care are likely to also be receiving palliative care. However, not all individuals receiving palliative care are receiving hospice care. Palliative care provides care to people who are physically suffering. Brief relief from physical pain or suffering during the treatment of a disease or for those who are living with a chronic disease. Please know that United Healthcare is here for you and can connect you with many services, even more than what I have spoke to on this slide. As I mentioned previously, we are here to help you. If you heard something today that you have more questions on, or maybe you know of something that I didn't speak to and you would like to talk to somebody and get more information about that, you can call customer service. We are here to help you Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And their phone number is 1-877-259-0493. Our member website is also available to you as a resource to help you find out more specific plan information for the San Francisco Health Service System plans offered to you through United Healthcare. You do need your ID number located on your member ID card to register. Once you've registered, you can view benefit information, review claims, and view your EOBs. Also, you can view all that United Healthcare has to offer. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to helping you with your healthcare needs. Great, thank you so much to all of the presenters. This is my favorite time, which is the live Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please look for the little question mark box on your menu bar, either at the top or bottom of your screen and send us a question. We know that this is a really challenging topic, but it's also a very important one. Um, many of our members, I imagine, are perhaps in the sandwich generation. Perhaps you're caring for elders at home 
or perhaps you yourself are considering, you know, your legacy and what your end of life wants to may look like. Planning for this before something happens is always the best thing to do, even though it is very difficult to talk about with your family. And so we highly encourage everyone to have an advanced care directive. And we hope that if you have any questions um, that you please reach out and get them answered. So with, with that, please, please put your questions in the, to the Q&A chat. I am looking, ooh, I see one, one just popped up. Um, I know that all of our vendors and experts are here today and they are happy to answer your call. Oh, okay. Oh, somehow the United Healthcare uh, didn't have any sound. I'm sorry to hear that. And um, and our member is asking just, for. Just I I could hear her. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we will try to put the presentations up on our website. So after. After this webinar closes, we will upload we will upload this um, webinar to our open enrollment calendar so that you can review it at your leisure. Perhaps you want to discuss this with with your loved ones, but certainly planning for for this event is very important. Hi, Jessica. This is Holly, one of um, our moderators on the webinar today, and um, just wanted to confirm that there was a brief, maybe five seconds of no sound, um, but we did check internally and um, it was able to come back on. So I apologize to anyone listening who may have had that a little bit more delayed, um, but it did it did end with sound. Thank you for that clarification, Holly. And if anyone else has any questions, we have all of our vendors standing by and they are happy to answer your questions. And of course, we know that it may be difficult. Perhaps you want a one on one consultation. Could we go to that slide to let people know where they can sign up for a one on one consultation? Thank you so much. So if you go to sfhss.org forward slash OE 2022, you can just scroll down a little bit and you'll see um, health plan office hours all of our health plans um, have provided one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if you have, let's say, a personal nature to discuss, feel free to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation. They are happy to walk you through how it would work for their health plan. And while we're waiting for some questions to come in, I also want to add that we have a raffle drawing and we wanna thank you for attending the webinar today. So please, Please enter the raffle. We have some pretty awesome prizes from our vendors. Everything you'll see from a Fitbit watch, a Bluetooth speakers to a barbecue set and backpacks and United Healthcare has put a lot of goodies into that basket. So we are ready to give them away in November. So please enter the raffle drawing. We'll be selecting winners in November and we will email you in early November on where to pick them up. Holly, if you could put that into the chat, that would be super. Oh. I see you've already put it into the chat. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are just going to stay on for another minute or so to see if any of our members have questions regarding this topic. Feel free to send us your questions. And if you don't have any questions, we will close this webinar in about a minute.
Okay, well, if we can move to the last slide, if you have any account related questions that aren't about the plants, please feel free to contact member services or visit our website as well. Um, Jessica, the, this is Holly coming in. It does look like we've um, received a question. Oh, excellent. Thanks so much. So thank you. So the question is, if nursing home care is needed, how is cost covered by each plan? That is a very good question. And um, who wants to take that first? Uh, how about Canopy Care? Yeah, this is Dr. Burnage. I, uh, after it's covered, I can't tell you explicitly in detail, but uh, if our health net uh, person is on with me, that would be in their realm. That would be Marvin. Yeah, is Marvin on? You muted Marvin? Yes, Marvin is here. Could you repeat the specific of what coverage? I didn't still quite get the gist question. If, they, if, if yes. a member or patient has a, a nursing home care, how is the cost covered by uh, our plan? Okay, I assume this is in a skilled nursing facility. And skilled nursing facilities are covered under most you know, plans. So my answer is if it's skilled services, I would make the distinction in that skilled services are for skilled needs, physical therapy, uh, tube feedings, you know, a, something that requires a professional, as opposed to a custodial care, which is simply someone who needs assisted living. And that's generally not covered by health plan. So that's what the question is addressing is skilled versus custodial. Skilled is covered, custodial generally is not. Thank you for that clarification. And just for further clarification, could you explain what type of situation um, might happen to a member for them to need a skilled nursing facility versus custodial care? Uh, most, I'd say probably the two most common. Probably most common is patients are in the hospital, they get deconditioned because they've been lying in bed. And now you say, I can't send them home. They're not walking, they're not strong enough, they're going to fall. And so you send them to a skilled nursing facility where they're going to do daily physical therapy working on the member. Probably the second or is right up there with them is a patient needs antibiotics. Usually your preference is to give IV antibiotics in the home setting. Again, home setting, I'll be honest as a physician to tell you, I'd rather be at home than be in any kind of facility. So they need IV antibiotics, but the home situation doesn't do it. Then I need to put them in a nursing facility. This especially holds true when the antibiotics are several times a day. So if you have a three time a day or four time a day IV antibiotic, it is very difficult uh, to do that at home. And then we put them in a skilled facility. So I give you an idea and you can see where one required, you have a physical therapist every day, a lot of assistance. Another, you need a nurse giving IV antibiotics. Whereas custodial is, you know, my mother is 97 years old. She really can't take care of herself. Uh, she needs to be in some kind of facility where, you know, someone else does the cooking so she doesn't burn the house down when she cooks and someone else there if there's any kind of emergency. So it's really just a place to live. And that's custodial. Right. And custodial care is not covered by any and of that our is not. Great. And and um, and I see I see Paulo from Kaiser Permanente on our screen. Do you have anything to add to that? I believe it's very similar. Is that correct? Hi, Jessica. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, um, we do not cover custodial care or nursing homes. We do cover skilled nursing facility um, at no charge up to 100 days per benefit period. Thank you for that. And Jan, do you have any clarification for how the United Healthcare Plan works? And I, I would agree with the two prior carriers. Our plan would be the same. The only um, non-medically related care that we do have is the care links. And so you can access some um, like at-home personal care services through care links, either at a distance 
count or if it's post-discharge, then you do have a few hours available to you for free. Thank you, thank you. And Adam, I'm, I'm assuming Blue Shield uh, covers skilled nursing the same? Correct, yeah, it's for the same as your other vendor partners. Um, on the HMO Access Plus and Trio, it's covered up to 100 days uh, per benefit period per member at a $0 co uh, copay. And on the new PPO Accolade, it's 120 days per member per benefit period, 15% in network, 50%, 50% out of network. Thank you for that. He even had the rates. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> So for the next question, I've done some work on advanced care directive before. It's wonderful to hear, but I think it needed to be notarized at the end to take effect. Does the city and county of San Francisco or any of the programs have a notary available for this last step? Um, actually, I'm wondering, does our health plan assist with this? Uh, Adam, I see you on my screen first, so could you answer that? I don't believe we have any services that would help get it notarized um, because the member is doing it outside of Blue Shield as the carrier. They would go and you know download the forms or go get assistance from their, their primary care physician. So I, I would have to say no, we don't have uh, notary services available. Okay, and Paulo, do you know anything? I know you have special classes for that for Kaiser. Is there? Yeah, we do have the class to help the member fill out the life care plan. Don't think we have the notar uh, the notary as well, similar to the the previous gentleman who just spoke. Okay, thank you so much for that. And what about HealthNet? Is, so is that a part of yeah, one thing I would say is uh, there's an option here. You don't have to have it notarized necessarily as long as you have two witnesses sign the document. Oh, yeah. well, look at that. Yeah, I think fact, that's the key element. In my shelf here, and I never had it notarized. It was signed by two individuals. Yeah, there are a couple different requirements on who can be a witness. However, generally two witnesses will do it, so you don't have to have a notary. Right. But then you're correct. If you do need a notary, most health plans are not going to have a notary you know, on call. OK, thank you for that clarification, and that was really helpful. So you can always get to uh, what do you mean by qualifications for who can be? Uh, uh, for example, it cannot be I think it cannot be your agent. It can be there's a couple of things about it, it cannot be your physician. It cannot be the owner of a nursing home. There's a couple of little caveats in there. But it usually is right in the advanced directive. Oh, okay. In but most so cases, can... you know, it, it's someone, as long as it's not your agent, not someone, I think they're looking for someone who might say, quote, has a vested interest where they could okay. influence you. So as long as it's an independent witness. Okay. So a neighbor would be better than a family member who might inherit something. Right. Exactly. Okay. Thank you for that. I, I hope that's helpful. Are there any more questions? We know this is a tough topic, but you know it's better to be prepared and have this in place. I would make one comment. As healthcare professionals, I think it's always good that we actually have done our advanced directive and I know as a physician, I like to be able to tell patients, yes, I have an advanced directive. Yes, my wife has an advanced directive. Yes, they're in a place where you can find them in our house. Why? And it's just for the reasons that all the speakers have mentioned. It is the right thing to do. Thank you so much. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're 22 or you're 102. We highly recommend that everyone has one in place because you just never know. So I don't see any more questions. If you can take it to the last slide. Uh, if anyone has any account related questions, feel free to call member services or always check back on our sfhss.org website. We have a lot of information. Um, we hope you found this webinar helpful today and we want to thank everyone for coming. Have a great afternoon. Oh, Jessica.
This is yeah. the moderator coming in. Um, we did have one last question, and since we're still within our time frame, I thought we could um, attend to this um, question. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much for calling that out. And you know what? I see the question, and it is a wonderful question. Who decides when a patient needs either hospice or palliative care? You know what? I'll give that to Dr. Burnish or Dr. Gordon. <laughs> No, no, I'll take that one. That's a really, really good question. It's a tough question. Um, ideally, uh, the member of the patient, if they're uh, coherent and can uh, make those kind of decisions informed and understand the difference between the levels of care um, and benefits. Um, if it's not, if the patient is, say, in a coma or not uh, capable of making decisions, uh, then it would be their legal guardian um, or medical custodian. Uh, somebody who can uh, have legal power to make those sorts of decisions. Sometimes uh, what's confusing about the two is there's overlap. A patient may be in the end stages of life in the last six months, but uh, <clears throat> they're not ready to say they want to go into hospice. That can be a tough decision for uh, uh, individuals. Uh, they feel in some instances like they're giving up. Um, and so palliative care can sometimes be a uh, intermediate uh, place to still get care. Uh, there, there may not be a cure uh, available for the condition, um, but it kind of is a way to ease into, into hospice. Uh, but sometimes people die in palliative care just as, as easily and as well, and especially if it can be done at home. And I would you know, add, remember, Either hospice or palliative care is revocable by the member. They are free to change their mind at any time in the future. I think the key difference usually is to make sure the member understands what each of them are. The key difference is with palliative care, you're still receiving your disease focused care. You can still be getting radiation, chemotherapy, whatever. Hospice is generally focused on comfort care rather than disease focused. That's really the big difference. And as Dr. Burns mentioned, I'm not, I'm not ready to give up my disease focused team and physicians, my oncologist, my chemo. Therefore, they're not going to go with hospice. But later on, it may be the transition. And this is very common say, OK, I've you know been in the program for six months. Yes, I got a little better for a while. Now it's getting worse. I think now I'd really like to focus on comfort rather than treatment of the disease, and they shift over to hospice. And we've had members go hospice to palliative care. We've had members go palliative care to hospice. Great, thank you so much for that clarification. Um, I'm looking at the next question, and I know it's not specifically about a palliative care or advanced care directive or hospice, but I do want to address this question because there is, we do offer voluntary um, benefits and some of that is supplemental insurance. And so we have a member asking, I'm a bit confused about how the voluntary benefits for Chubb insurance kicks in to pay for some of this. And does Chubb pick up where the insurance plans leave off? Do the claims between health plans and insurance company have to be coordinated? Um, and meaning the long-term care benefit. Oh, okay, long-term care, benefit. If you selected uh, a long-term care benefit, I believe that that insurance actually provides care for custodial living in a nursing facility. Is, is that correct? Marvin, I, I saw for, you. Yeah, when you have a long-term care benefit, yes, that's the custodial benefit. You're absolutely correct. Okay, so I hope that helps. It, it, I do not believe that long-term care benefit covered skilled nursing. So let's say you have a medical uh, incident and you need skilled nursing assistance. That's still covered by your health plan. That's and usually your regular policy, correct? Perfect. Thank you so much. So I hope we answer that question, but that is a great question. And you're right. We do have a lot of supplemental insurance to cover various things from accidents to accidents and injuries to um, illnesses. And in those cases, you're right, you may have a different coverage, whether it's additional financial support for an illness or an accident. 
Uh, I'd also comment that uh, really giving credit to all the health plans. In general, palliative is not necessarily a benefit. For example, Medicare is just starting to talk about how do you make it a benefit? And this is really where the health plans were a step ahead and said, you know what? This is the right thing to do. It is cost effective. We're going to give our members something that's actually not, quote, a benefit, but it's a service. And if you remember a couple of years ago, California, the legislature said we're going to make Medi-Cal or Medicaid palliative care a benefit. They defined it. So um, I would say if you're trying to see what's in your policy, always read the fine print of your policy because they do vary somewhat. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for explaining that. And we are very, you know, we're certainly advocates for the, this benefit for our members having access to palliative care and hospice. We believe in both the programs very much. So thank you. And is there another question? Long term care. Okay. I don't see any more questions in the queue. If you have one, please fire away because, uh, Holly will definitely let me know. Otherwise, I want to thank everyone for attending today. We really appreciate your questions. We know this is a difficult topic, but such an important one. So thank you for attending today, and we hope you spread the news and also encourage people that you know to have an advanced care directive in place. And everyone, please take care of yourself and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.